So today we're going to make a start on the further stats to year 13 content. And the very first place we start is with combining random variables. And we're going to take this back to something you should be familiar with from year 12. So let the event x, let the discrete random variable x represent the throw of a fair six sided die. Now I expect all of you can think of the probability distribution for that six sided die. We need the sample space, which is all the possible outcomes, one, two, all the way through to six. And we need the probability of each of those outcomes occurring. On a fair die, the probability is one sixth for each of these. From that, we were able to find the expectation. We could find the expectation by multiplying the X values, the possible outcomes with their corresponding probability and then summing all of those products together. Alternatively, we could have found the expectation by symmetry. We know that since this is a uniform distribution, it's symmetrical, the very middle value would be the expectation. In the middle of three and four, we have 3.5. Similarly, we should be able to find the variance of X using year 12 techniques. We would square each of the X values, multiply by the associated probability. That will give us E of X squared. And then we would subtract the expectation of X squared. We'll be subtracting 3.5 squared. And that gives us the variance. So I want you to have these starting points for us to think what happens when we combine these variables? So if X is one fair six sided die being thrown and Y is another fair six sided dice being thrown, what happens when we add the results of the two together? So X plus Y would produce this sample space. This should seem quite familiar to you. You've been producing this sample space with many different names all the way since year nine. This sample space has its own probability distribution. So the distribution of the combination of the result you get on two separate dice. Well, here is that distribution. All the possible outcomes, all the possible scores you could have got by adding the two dice together and the probabilities that match them. We should be able to find the expectation and the variance of this distribution. And I want you to pay careful attention to how they relate to these original expectation of X and variance of X. The expectation of this combination is seven. You could also tell by symmetry that the expectation would be seven. The variance of this combination is 70 over 12. So oh, these would be found using the whole approach that we discussed before. Processing all of that gives us these two answers, but you might have intuitively expected the expectation of the two of them to be seven, and maybe even expected the variance of the two of them to be seven. Let's see what happens when we subtract. So this time around, the sample space looks like this. The probability distribution comes out like this. So here we have another symmetrical distribution and this time by symmetry, we would expect the expectation to be zero. You may have got that through another intuitive method, but we can see here the expectation is zero. How about the variance? What do you think we'll get for the variance when we've subtracted one variable from another? At this point, a lot of students tell me that they expect the variance to be zero. But a variance of zero means all the values were the same. There is no variability. There is no spread in the data, no spread in the outcomes. That wouldn't quite make sense. And actually, if we process this in the same way we usually do, finding the expectation of the variable squared and subtracting the expectation of the variable squared, we would actually get a variance of 70 over 12. So that's the same as the variance that we got when we're adding. So here the main point to take away is that whether we're adding or subtracting, the variance is always increasing. Now we can generalize in this form, the expectation of X plus or minus Y equals the expectation of X plus or minus the expectation of Y. 
But for the variance, whether we're adding or subtracting, we would always add together the individual variances. And this form applies to when we have multiples of X and multiples of Y. So something that you're familiar with, just bringing out the coefficient of the variable and squaring it on the outside. Okay, so let's actually see this in action. We'll try this with an example. So in this question, we've been told that x1, x2, and x3 are independent normal variables such that they follow these distributions. x1 has a normal distribution. The mean is 8. The variance is 2 squared. x2 has this normal distribution, and x3 has this. We've been told that y is a combination of these three variables y equals 3x1 minus x2 plus x3. We've been asked to find the distribution of y. So to find the distribution of y, we need to know both the expectation of y and the variance of y. So I just need the expectation of the left-hand side, and that must equal the expectation of the right-hand side. Once I've written this out, I know that I can break the right-hand side and each of its terms into its own individual expectation expression. So, expectation of 3x1 minus the expectation of x2 plus the expectation of x3. I can bring the coefficient outside, 3 times the expectation of x1. And now I'm just going to substitute those values in. So, from the distributions, I'm going to get 3 times 8 minus 13 plus 18. The expectation of y is 29. Let's find the variance. So, starting in a similar way, the variance of y equals the variance of the right-hand side. Now, I should be able to write each of these as their own individual term. But remember, regardless if we're adding or subtracting, we're going to add the individual variances. So, the variance of 3x1 plus the variance of x2 plus the variance of x3. Bringing the coefficient out gives us 3 squared. So, 3 squared, variance of x1. Now we're ready for some substitution. So 9 times 2 squared plus the 2 squared plus 3 squared. Altogether, we get a variance of y of 49. That's enough to now write the distribution. y follows a normal distribution where the mean is 29, the standard deviation is 7, and the variance is 49, which is why I've written it as 7 squared. We know to keep the format we want the standard deviation squared. Okay, so from here, we want to move on to a distinction that is quite important to make. What is the difference between 4x and 4x's? So to illustrate that, I want you to think about this jug. This is a one litre jug that has measurement markings printed onto the sides. Now, the manufacturing company tries their best to be as accurate as possible with the production of these jugs, but there is some variability. The mean, mean capacity of the jug is one liter, but there is a variance of 0 0.1 liters. There is some variance. If we thought about 4X, 4X would represent getting one of these jugs and then trying to fill up a bucket with the same jug four times. Now, what you need to think here is that if there's any error, that error is going to be duplicated every single time we fill up the bucket. So that same error is going to be processed four times. Mathematically, we represent that as the variance of 4x. And when we bring the 4 outside, that will be 4 squared or 16 variance of x. Now, that's different from 4x's. 4x's would represent four separate jugs. The bucket is being filled up with four different jugs. Now, if there's an error in the production of one of these jugs, which means it has more than a litre, there's just as likely to be an error in another jug that has less than a litre. So these errors start to balance and cancel each other out. It's not that they don't exist, but they're not compounding in the same way using one jug with its error would compound. So, although the variability is increasing, it doesn't increase at the same rate. 
Here we would have the variance of x1 plus the variance of x2 plus the variance of x3 plus the variance of x4. Altogether, that would be four variance of x. So the scaling factor here is four rather than 16. Was it the same jug multiple times or four distinct individual jugs? That's the difference between 4x and 4x's. This distinction is crucially important when it comes to working with combining variables. So let's put that into a question and see how we get on. Here we're told that bottles of mineral water are delivered to shops in crates containing 12 bottles each. The weights of the bottles are normally distributed with a mean weight of 2 kilograms and a standard deviation of 0 0.05. The weights of empty crates are normally distributed with a mean of 2.5 kilograms and a standard deviation of 0 0.3 kilograms. In part A, we're asked to assume that all random variables are independent. They need to be independent for us to use our techniques around combining. We've been asked to find the probability that a full crate will weigh between 26 kilograms and 27 kilograms. Okay, so let's actually start by getting a distribution for individual bottles and a distribution for the crates. So we know the bottles follow a normal distribution where the mean is two and the standard deviation 0 0.05. Whereas the crates, they follow a normal distribution where the mean weight is 2.5 and the variance is 0 0.3 squared. Okay, now let's move on to the expression for the weight of a full crate. Well, that's going to be an empty crate plus 12 individual bottles. We should be able to find the expectation of this. It's the expectation of the empty crate plus 12 times the expectation of a bottle. Substitute those values in, 2.5 plus 12 times 2, that's 26.5. Let's find our variance. Well, the variance of the weight is going to be the variance of the weight of the crate plus 12 times the variance of the weight of a bottle. 0 0.3 squared plus 12 times 0 0.5 squared Add it all together, we get a variance of 0 0.12. Okay, that's enough to define the distribution. W follows a normal distribution of 26.5 and the square root of 0 0.12 squared. Took a bit of work to get there, but we're just using this normal distribution as you would usually expect to, to find the probability of being in between 26 and 27. So let's just see this on the diagram. 26.5 is the mean. 26 and 27 are equally distant on each side. So we have a little bit of symmetry here. In our calculators, NCD, 26, 27 for the minimum, maximum, standard deviation, and the mean. That gets us an answer of 0 0.8511. So we ended with a normal distribution calculation, but we started with the combination of variables. We had to decide on what combination to use, and then we found the expectation and the variance. In part B, we're told that two bottles are selected at random from a crate, and we're asked to find the probability that they differ in weight by more than 0 0.1 kilograms. So, firstly, let's get an expression for this. I'm gonna call the difference D, and D is going to be B1 minus B2. As always, we want the expectation and we want the variance. The expectation of D is gonna be the expectation of B minus the expectation of B. These are gonna cancel each other out. So two minus two gives us zero. The variance of D, well, that's the variance of B plus the variance of B, that's two times 0 0.05 squared, and that gets us 0 0.005. So we have the expectation and the variance, we can define the distribution. The difference follows a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of root 0 0.005. Now let's actually answer the question. 
the probability that they differ in weight by more than 0 0.1. Well, it can differ and be positive, it can differ and be negative. So I'm gonna start by saying the probability that the modulus of B1 minus B2 is greater than 0 0.1. So let's actually look at this on a diagram. So if this is the distribution of the differences, I'm interested in being beyond 0 0.1 and beyond negative 0 0.1. So I want these outside regions. Okay, how would I find the probability of those outside regions? I could do two times the probability that this distribution is greater than 0 0.1, or I can do one minus the probability that it's in between negative 0 0.1 and positive 0 0.1. Either of those, whichever comes to you more intuitively is fine and both of them get us the same answer of 0 0.1573. Okay, and now just to answer the last part of the question, we were asked to find the maximum weight M that a full crate could have on its label so that there's only a 1% chance that it weighs more than that value of M. So a 1% chance of being beyond M. We're going back to the original distribution we found, so the weight of the crate. So, the mathematical notation I'll use here, the probability that the weight exceeds M equals 0 0.01. So M's over here in the right-hand tail, and we only have 0 0.01 above M. To calculate M, I'm going to do the inverse, use the inverse normal distribution. 0 0.99, standard deviation, and the mean. M is 27.3. So for this question, because we have the use of the inverse function on our calculator, we can get there quite quickly. Without one of these calculators, we would have had to rely on the Z score. We could always find the Z score in the table that has 1% above it. And then we would use the standardization formula to try and undo the Z score until we found this real world value for M. So today we've looked at how to combine variables. The key takeaway is that the variance is always increasing. We would never be subtracting variances. Also be careful the difference between 4x and 4x's. If you're not sure, go back and rewatch that part of the video. You should come into class absolutely clear on the difference between the two and when to use each of them. Those of you who are using your yellow reflection booklets correctly, I'm sure that's something that you're going to want to remember. I'm sure that's something you're going to want to make a note of to remember and process correctly each time. This topic of combining variables is going to appear throughout the rest of the course. So we need to master this early to make light work of the topics and concepts that are to come.